Walter liked to sit under the piano while his two older sisters practiced. They made a lot of mistakes. You're playing the wrong note, he said. By the age of four, he was in command of the piano bench. Erna may have been twelve and Truda fourteen, but Walter was the one with the musical ability, and so he kept playing and improving as he got older. By sixteen, he was attending the music academy in Vienna, while also attending regular public high school. The situation may have seemed ideal, pursuing his passion with such vigor at such a young age. But discrimination in pre-World War II Austria was intense and was directed right at him and his family. Walter was Jewish. He was a minority in high school, at the university, and in Austria. His classmates called him a dirty Jew, and they blamed him for killing Christ. He was arrested and forced to scrub the streets after being questioned if he was Jewish and replying yes. He was humiliated. The university had what they called numerous clauses, that means closed numbers, and for every, uh, they, they, they would then admit ten non-Jews and one Jew. So the, the Jews could never be a majority, they always were in a small minority, and then on top of all, the university had academic autonomy. That means the police was not allowed in. But there were many Nazis among the students. And they ganged up on the Jewish students. And when you are outnumbered 10 to 1, there isn't is, is much you can do. And then what happened would be at the end of those riots, they would take the, 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 the Jewish students who were injured and throw them down, and the police, which was waiting there, would arrest the victims for, for disturbing the peace. That, sh that gives you an idea. In 1938, the Germans invaded Austria, and Walter didn't go to the music academy to avoid being arrested. Walter's father's bookbinding business lost customers and was taken away by the Germans. Later, the family's home was as well. Walter missed the music academy, for playing piano was his escape from the discrimination he always faced. Finally, Walter decided to leave the house and go to the music academy. Uh, maybe five weeks or so, I decided I'm going to dare to go to the academy and see what happens. And there I found German troops stationed there, sleeping on, on the floor or wherever, and their rifles were on the pianos. That was pretty depressing. So when I came home, I will never forget, I went to the piano, which I hadn't touched in a long time, and I played this ballad. And while I played it, the thought came to me, no matter what happens, this thing can never take away from me. And that's the way. And every time I play this ballad, I can't help thinking about it. two weeks, Walter's family received the Stima, or The Voice, which was a two-page Jewish newspaper. And in one of these newspapers, Walter saw something that would change his life, an audition for the head of the Music Academy in Palestine. It was an under-the-table agreement between the British High Commissioner and Hauser, the head of the Jerusalem Music Academy. The British High Commissioner gave Hauser 60 immigrant certificates meant for non-Jews so he could bring young aspiring Jewish musicians to Jerusalem. I read in the paper when he will be in, in Vienna and where he will be, the hotel. And I was, Erna went with me, I once said, at 8 o'clock in the morning. 
he came at two. And he, then he said, I'm sorry, I, I have an appointment, I have to leave. And I went ahead of him and jumped into the taxi and says, I'm going with you. This may have saved my life. We went to the, into the, an apartment and there was a piano, and some people were sitting there, I don't know who they are. And there was a piano. And he said, play. In Vienna, in German, spiel. And I did. And he said, I will bring you under all circumstances to Jerusalem. I didn't know whether to believe him, but four weeks later I was in Jerusalem. Without him, I, I may never have survived. They, they, he offered me right away a scholarship and, uh, and a stipend. I mean, it was, it was perfectly nice. Then, it was um, difficult, difficult, but nice. I was 16 years old, and your age now. So was Imagine you had to leave. And under such circumstances where I didn't know if I'd ever see them again. While Walter traveled to Palestine via ship, his sister Truda skied over the Swiss Alps to Switzerland, and his sister Erna took a ship to New York. Walter arrived in Jerusalem with ten German marks, or three dollars, in his pocket. At first he stayed in a room with two others at the conservatory, but soon enough he found a furnished room that he was able to stay in, in exchange for giving the landlord's daughter piano lessons. After spending about a year in Jerusalem studying music, Walter went to New York to meet up with his parents, who had recently arrived there. Walter then went on to study at the renowned Curtis Institute of Music in Philadelphia. And then came his town hall debut in New York City. I made my debut that same year. Where? In town hall. by the New York critics as the most outstanding performer under 30. I was 21. In the beginning, my father, like every good Jewish father, he wanted me to be a doctor or a lawyer. And he would say, well, a pianist, a musician, he'll be starving all his life. Well, after my official debut in New York, my father never went out without the New York Times article about me in his pocket. On a boat returning from his first tour in Europe and Mexico, Walter met a young girl named Esther who was seasick and was on her way to America for the first time. Esther became his wife and they were married for 59 years and had two children, Debbie and David. Music shaped his life from the age of four it saved his life, made his life, and still is his life. At 90 years old, he still performs as a soloist and with orchestras, and he's still going strong. <laughs>